All right, so last learning goal of Unit 9. And basically, it's just solving story problems, applying what you've learned about multiplying and dividing fractions. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Uh, and we just want you to think about the difference between multiplying and dividing because sometimes when you're reading story problems, it's, it's tricky to, tell. to mm -hmm. tell, especially with fractions. Yeah. So um, we just want you to be aware of the differences here. So we have multiplication on one side, division on the other. Let's just focus on multiplication first. So looking here, um, multiplication, just remember, it tells how many times we're like taking one number and doing something with it. So think about that. Then also think about how one can take a number maybe three times or only one third time. So just remember, like sometimes we get overwhelmed with these fractions, but think about, right. well, you could do the same with a whole number too. And sure. that just might simplify in your mind mm -hmm. how to go about doing this. And last, um, just this key idea of, if um. you see this word of, mm -hmm. keyword, think, multiply. Yep. When in doubt, see that word of, think, mm -hmm. multiply. And when you go to write your own story problem as your learning goal, I would try and use that one. Use yeah. the word of. I'm taking Keep a fraction simple. of something just to make it a little easier. Mm -hmm. Now, division um, is just, you can tell how many of a certain number are inside another number. Now, mm -hmm. that seems sort of wordy, but... You know, if you think about you have um, I don't know, 20 paper clips and you want to think about how you can put them inside like smaller boxes or into another one. Mm -hmm. That's just one example. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, once again, one can find how many threes there are inside of a number or you can think about how there's, you can figure out how many three-fourths mm -hmm. there are inside of a number too. Yeah. When you think of story problems, if you're splitting it into equal groups of some sort, mm -hmm. so every time you do this, uh, that's more division. So again, you could even plug in like a whole number instead of a fraction and mm -hmm. see if that helps you figure out which one it is. Okay, so using that, we're going to do a couple of real quick examples, and then we'll get a chance to try some, of course, like always. So a turtle crawls half a yard in an hour. How far will it crawl in two hours? So a half a yard in one hour. So now how many in two hours? So hopefully you're thinking that this is multiplication. So it should be one half times two. And we can go through all the steps, but one half we turn two into a fraction, two over one, and then we just multiply straight across, which becomes two over two. And then I just simplified it into one mm -hmm. as my answer. So that mm -hmm. answer is nice and simplified. One thing I was just thinking of, too, since this is a story problem, you probably want to add a label, like one yes. yard. So. Ooh, yeah. Whoops. Okay. Next one. I don't think we labeled any of them. We'll have huh. to see. You need to do better than us. Okay. A turtle crawls half a yard in an hour. So, again, same thing. How far will it crawl in half an hour? So, again, I'm still taking of something. So, this time, instead of it being a half of two hours, I'm taking a half of a half an hour. So I'm still multiplying. I'm just mm -hmm. multiplying fractions. So one half of one half is the same thing as saying one half times one half. And then once you have that set up, hopefully it's really easy for you to just multiply straight across. So that is our example. Now you get to try this one. Yes. So Jan has a recipe that calls for three-fourths of a cup of flour. She wants to use only one half of the three-fourths cup. How much flour will she need? So pause okay. and try. <laughs> That's like us bolding the word yes. out there for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here we go. This is what you should have had. Three-fourths, or I'm sorry, one-half of three-fourths. So that's the same thing as saying three-fourths times one-half. And if you just multiply across the numerators and the denominators, you should get three-eighths. Oh, and there is a label. Three-eighths oh, cup of flour. That there should have been your final answer. <laughs> All right, now we're going to do another example for you. So a pitcher holds five-eighths of a gallon of lemonade. Oh, and in case you're wondering, you will get a chance to do some all by yourself at the end. Don't worry. Yes. I know you were stressing about that. Um, a pitcher holds five-eighths of a gallon of lemonade. Each paper cup holds one-twelfth of a gallon. How many paper cups can be filled? So I've got five-eighths of a gallon, and I'm finding out how many twelfths will go into that. So I'm splitting that 5 eighths into 12. So that hopefully will clue you in onto the fact that this is division. Yeah. 
So I'm going to write it out first. 5 eighths time are divided by 1 twelfth. And if you remember our little code. Keep yep, keep. So I keep my first number. Then I change my symbol. So it changed from division to multiplication. And then I flipped or found the reciprocal of my second number. And then I just multiplied them straight across 68. Now, that is a hugely improper fraction. <laughs> so you need to convert that into a mixed number. So again, how many times does 8 go into 60, 7, and then there are 4 left over. So 7 and 4 eighths. And if you want to simplify it even more, 4 eighths could be simplified to 1 half. In cups. Cups. Label. 7 and 1 half. <clears throat> cups. So if at all possible, simplify your answer as much as you can. And then just your little quick reminder, keep, change, flip. So another chance for you to pause and try. So just look at this a moment. Luke runs two and seven-tenths miles every day, to be exact. And he stops every nine-tenths of a mile to rest. So how many stops does he make? Think about what you might need to do in this case. A couple of things you need to do in this case to yes, make this easier. That's true. Oh, and I will give you one, we will give you one friendly reminder. Um, remember, mixed numbers should be changed to an improper fraction next time. <laughs> Good luck. All right, so hopefully um, you remember to change to an improper fraction. So now your 2 and 7 tenths is 27 over 10. And hopefully you also recognize that this is a division problem. So you're dividing that by nine tenths. Mm -hmm. And that um, was hard for me to think about. Yeah. So I think about like, okay, so he runs this sort of obscure amount, two and seven tenths, <laughs> and every nine tenths he stops. So yes. when I thought of like, if I was drawing this on a line, his running path, and he was dividing it then every nine tenths, that's how I started to think of that it was a division mm -hmm. problem. Yeah. It is tricky. So mm -hmm. I think just trying to apply it and visualize it in some way is always really, really helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, so looking here, um, just going through the steps now that you are well aware of, keeping and then changing your division sign to multiplication and then flipping, you should have gotten 270 over 90 if you didn't simplify beforehand. And mm -hmm. then um, that simplifies into three. Mm -hmm. So how many yep. stops does he make? He makes three stops along the way. Oh, you forgot to label. Ah. <laughs> All right, so like we promised, this is a chance for you to try two on your own. On the Peach Ridge Farm, seven-eighths of the eggs usually hatch. This year, only two-thirds as many eggs hatched. What fraction of the eggs hatched this year? So thinking about, hmm, what should we do? Think about it, try it. And then the second problem, and you should probably label these. Mm -hmm. um, Emily has three-fifths of a ton of feed for the chickens. She will move it by wheelbarrow to the hen house. Her wheelbarrow holds one-tenth of a ton. So how many trips will she need to make? So make sure, take the time to do those, easily labeled, so when you get back with your group, you can go over those. Yeah, and then your guiding question is just writing a story problem of your own. So if yes. you want to look back at these... To help you guide. I mean, you don't want to do the exact same problem, right. just changing the words. Make you know, it be more creative than that, but um, use these as a reference if you need to.